Amen. Amen. Ain't it good we serve a living Savior? Yes. I preach a lot of funerals in my life. And you know what gives me hope? And folks, I remember I told some folks that Betty just dropped by his love one night. Mm -hmm. and we're standing on resurrection ground. I said, mm -hmm. this ain't the end. This ain't the end. Praise God. This is, amen. Death is just the beginning for folks. You know that? Mm -hmm. But I thank God. Uh, Y'all go to sleep on this morning. Amen. <laughs> amen. Luke chapter 24. Verse 1. Very familiar. We've probably read this picture several Easter's and read from it, but we're going to do it again. We've got a little different way of looking at it this morning. It ain't changed the meaning, but just something else God gave us. <laughs> Verse 1 said, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found out the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass that they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Hey. And they were afraid and bowed down their face to the earth. They said unto them, I like this, why seek you to live among the dead? <laughs> Amen. He is not here, but he's risen. Remember how he spake to you when he was yet in Galilee. Yes. Saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and third day rise again. And they remembered his words and, he, and returned from the sepulchre and told all the, these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things and the disciples, or apostles, I'm sorry. And the words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed him not. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondered himself at that which was come to pass. Brother Philip, bless the reading of the word of God this morning. Oh God, we thank you for this holy Oh God, help us this morning. We thank God for this We need a touch from heaven, but a new word, God. I pray God you bless the reading of the Lord. Oh God, if I have a heart for you, God, I pray God you bless the preaching of the Lord. Yes, God, do something, God. We have a heart for God for you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for everything you've done for us, Lord. We just want you to honor and we pray so much, amen. 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 That's amen, amen. Today, our hearts and minds are on the resurrection. Yes. You know, Easter is more than just the flowers you put in the church, the new outfits you wear. And I don't know where in the world in heaven they got an Easter money from Easter. I don't know. <laughs> and I don't know how they got eggs either. Everybody, eggs don't, uh, bunnies don't lay eggs, but they do. <laughs> but we see here this morning, we read here a great story. And it often said this, the resurrection is the most vocal point of the gospel. I mean, when Jesus died on Calvary and shed his blood, that wasn't quite enough because there had to be a resurrection. He had to rise and defeat death. Never had no one defeated death. No one had ever, I know a lot of folks say, well, I died and they come back, but sometimes I wonder about it. <laughs> I come close to a couple months ago to meet the Lord, but I'm going to tell you something this morning. I remember years ago <laughs> at a revival meeting here, we had a little boy about 11 years old step back there, and it got on in here. I mean, God was moving in our revival. And I remember that little boy got up. Or oh, that little boy got up and he was talking about Jesus. He said, Jesus died for me. He died for me. Well, they had a little girl in the church, went to, went to the church one day, and uh, they said, what happened on Easter? She said, Jesus died, but he didn't say me. Yeah. I'm glad this morning we're serving the living Savior. Now, I'll tell you what, look, a lot of people, you kind of wonder if their Savior's alive or not, but they are. Yeah. But he is alive today, and I'm glad and grateful for that. 
But we see the story unfolds here. How did what had happened? He had been crucified. He had been put in the grave. The stone had been rolled, rolled in front of the cave, in front of the grave. It had been sealed. Guard had been posted all around. Let me tell you, they thought, hey, we got him. You remember, I thought about Calvary. How that when Jesus hung on heaven and earth, and I've said this many times, and I believe it to be true. It's been, uh, you remember in the Bible, we're talking about when Judas is carried, betrayed the Lord. The Bible says this, you read the scripture where it said that the devil himself entered into Judas. There's no other place in the Bible that mentions the devil actually entered into anybody but Judas. And I remember, I believe that day on Calvary with Jesus hanging there. There were multitudes around. But I believe, I kind of believe maybe the devil was standing by watching the whole thing. And when Jesus bowed his head and gave up the ghost, I bet the devil said, we've got it now. Ain't nobody ever went through the my door, death door, and came back out victorious. No one ever, ever conquered death. But let me tell you, Jesus was born to die. You understand? Yeah. Well, he was born there in uh, Bethlehem. He knew what his destiny was. His destiny was the cross of Calvary. <laughs> let me tell you, fallen men need to understand this. Had not been with the crucifixion, the bloodshed of Calvary, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, all men would have no hope. But I'm glad there is hope in the song we sang a while ago. I'm glad my hope is in a resurrected Savior. Yes. Amen. But our hearts and minds, and there are a lot of places in the Bible, amen, that we can see that prove the doctrine of the resurrection. Now, there's a lot of people don't believe that he rose from the grave. A lot of these liberal theologians say, well, he was just in a coma. He was mm -hmm. swooned in a, in a, let me tell you, but the Bible said he died. Yeah. And the, died means he's dead. Amen. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing, Daddy, I'm glad, amen, he, he did die for me and for you. But the proof's all in the Bible of the resurrection. And Acts 1 3 said, To whom he also showed himself alive uh, after his passion by uh, many infallible proofs, being seen of them for 40, for 40 days, uh, 40 day, and speaking of the thing pertaining to the kingdom of God. That was, a, that was a proof of the resurrection. Let me tell you, you can go to any other religious leader in the world. Some of them already died. You can go to Buddha's tomb. Buddha's tomb, Nick, y'all, you find the bones. You go to Confucius too. Yep. All you find is a, dead, a, a bunch of bones. But you travel to Jerusalem, amen. Yeah. Outside the wall of Jerusalem. Out there in the garden of yep. Joseph's sepulcher. Yeah. And I guarantee the tomb is empty, amen. Yes, amen. He didn't need it. He amen. was just using it, amen. Yeah. amen. Can, you, can you see? Can you see the, the headline with a woman in the Jerusalem post after that? And it says, hey, for sale. One used two. Amen. 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 I don't have to go to Jerusalem and know he yeah. lived. Because he lived in my heart. Yeah. I remember what he done for me. What yeah. he came. Yeah. 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 I bet you saw it. I, amen. I believe he came back from the dead. Yeah. I'm glad he's alive. He said, I'm, I'm he that was alive. And now I'm alive. I'm dead, but now I'm alive. <laughs> yes, yes. Amen. 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 Yeah. The purpose of the resurrection, too. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 says, For I delivered unto you that first of all, which I also received, how Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture. He said he died for all sins. Not just somebody's sin, not just partial, he died for all. Let me tell you, and he was buried, and then he rose again according to the scripture. I'm glad he's alive for the purpose. If they were, you know what? You know some facts would be if there weren't no resurrection, what some facts would be. First of all, we see here the fact would be God would be alive. And we know God's not alive. Now the Bible says in, in Isaiah 9 and 6, For unto us a child born, unto us a, a son is given, and his government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, 
Let me tell you, how can he be the everlasting father if he's dead? Yeah. Mm -hmm. he yeah. It's not possible. Yeah. But let me tell you what, I'm glad he's alive. Yeah. Hey, man, he ain't never had a beginning, he ain't got no end. That's right. He's infinite in his mercy and his wisdom. Let me tell you what, if Jesus, if you know what, if there was no resurrection, Jesus was a loser, but he wasn't a loser. Some writer said if he couldn't defeat death, he couldn't defeat anything. And I'm afraid he thinks nothing but a joke. But look at the preeminence of the resurrection. Let me tell you what, friend. We needed a Savior. We needed a boy, a spotless lamb to die for us. We needed someone to shed the blood and help with Jesus Christ. And he died according to the scripture. And he rose again according to the scripture. Let me tell you. It, all the gospel, everything comes the gospel, the death, burial, the resurrection of Christ, but it all hinges on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And he rose that day. I'm glad of the preeminence of that. I can, I, can, I can think about this. Think about that. And then women got up early in the morning. You notice it was the women got up, the men stayed home in the bed, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> they did. But if they got there, we can see the, 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 the surprise on their face. And they got there. They wondered how they went to the tomb. Now that tomb wasn't no little rock. That little stone was no little rock. It took, it took many men to seal that tomb. And when they got there, they began to talk with them and say, who would roll the stone away? They didn't know that somebody didn't beat them to it. Yeah. But when they got there and saw the tomb, the Bible said, there they found him looking there. And they found the grave clothes. Then they found the napkin. Jewish custom this. You go eat at a meal, they, a Jew eat at a meal. And if he didn't enjoy that meal, he would take your napkin and wad it up and throw it on the table. But if he enjoyed that meal, he would take that napkin and fold it and leave it on the table. You know what that was symbolizing was? I enjoyed the meal. I'll be back. Amen. And the Bible said they found the napkin folded by itself. Amen. Jesus said, I'm going, but I'm coming back. Amen. Amen. But here's the whole gist and the whole message I want to bring today. And let me tell you, here's what I'm going to preach on today. I'm glad that when the women look there, they begin to say, it don't seem real. <laughs> it don't seem real. Mm -hmm. Hey, they didn't know anything. They saw him. They walked with him. They traveled with him. But now here he was. Let me tell you one thing. You know what? It did not seem real because of the matter the way it discovered. And you yeah, ever thought about this? As big a fin as it was, God didn't see fit to let nobody see it happen. Yeah. But you know what? I believe. You know why? Because that's what faith is. We believe because God's word says it happened. And they get down to the tomb and because of, of, of here we see of the manner it was it, it was it was discovered. They came early to anoint the body with spices. Over in Mark chapter 16, 1. You gotta realize they spent some hard-earned money to buy those spices to anoint the body of our Lord. They probably sacrificed sleep to be able to work and honor him. But when they got there, I can see him now. And they got there, they said, look yonder. Something's, something's out of place. Mm -hmm. They saw that roll, stone roll away. Now, I got thinking about this. I don't know if they didn't say in the Bible, but they might have seen him soldier led all around. Because the Bible said they fell as dead men. But if they went into the tomb, we see what happened. Look at the anxiety they found out when his body went there. You see, they didn't even believe he was going to resurrect. Now, how do I know? Here's the proof of the put. Had they believed he was resurrected, they wouldn't even went to the body. That's good. Yeah, that's right. They wouldn't even went to the tomb if they knew he was resurrected. But see, they didn't really believe it. They were like everybody else. 
He didn't preach, hey, I'm going to return. They're going to kill me, but I'm going to rise again. I'm glad he did. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm glad he rose from the grave. Yes. That, that, that stone was right. That he signed him. They didn't believe he would. They walked in the tomb. Like old Gomer said, surprise, surprise, surprise. Let hmm. me tell you one thing. When they got there, he was gone. The Bible said they found it not. They found his body not. They said in verse 3, and they entered in and found not the body. Lord, that means they looked for it. I can imagine. As they said, you know, we laid it right here. We laid his body right here. It's not here now. Can you imagine? That we laid it here, but we don't know what happened to it. The stone men rolled away. We don't know what's going on. Bible said they were much perplexed. They, they begin to say, it can't be real. This can't be happening. This can't be happening, y'all. God chose the lead to first discover the resurrection. Can you imagine? I'm going to ask you, let me ask you something, friend. It was scared me to death. Mm -hmm. Hey, it scared you too. Yeah. Can you imagine? Burying somebody in a, in a tomb like that mm -hmm. and going to view the body and it was gone. Mm -hmm. And not only that, it, the clothes was there like it was like he was, he was still in like a cocoon, they said. Mm -hmm. It perplexed him. He said, hey, we, it, it's too good to be. It just can't be real. Something is, there's an explanation, but there was an explanation. Uh, amen. Yeah. 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 But we see here, as we look here, we see here that let me tell you what, friend. It seemed too good to be real. It just didn't seem real. First of all, because, second of all, because of the messenger that delivered it. And it came to pass in verse 4, as they were much perfect, there, thereby, behold, two men stood by them, shining on us. <clears throat> God chose to deliver an unbelievable message to two, by using two messengers that were unbelievable. And one, one of the gospels said one was on each end of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the place where the body lay. Right. If you read anything about the mercy seat, they got two chairs on facing each other and the wings almost touch right there in the middle. On each side of the ark of the covenant, almost touch. That's where the glory of God <coughs> But there they were. God chose the two messengers. It scared me to death because, see, I don't think that, that when they got in there, they didn't see the messenger, but all of a sudden they appeared. I just said, here. They was too important. They, this message was too important to be delivered by any man. You remember how the message God sent angels to deliver messages to other people in the Bible? He sent three angels to send a message to Abraham, tell him he's going to have a, young, have a son at age when he was 100 years old. God sent an angel to minister to Hagar in the wilderness. God sent an angel to stay the hand of Abraham on Mount Moriah. Remember that? When you go to sacrifice to Isaac? God sent an angel to drag out the Lord and his family out of Sodom. God even sent an angel to tell Mary that she'd go have a baby boy. Mm -hmm. Even God sent an angel to sing to them shepherds in the field that Christ had come. Let me tell you what, he said, God even sent an angel to Angels to minister to Christ that he was after he was in the wilderness for 40 days. This is the most important message that's ever been, ever been has ever been had of the history of mankind. Yes. Most important message, he's alive. He's alive. Let me tell you what, friend, we understand this. That was the most God sent the two angels. Then women saw them angels. I guarantee they say, wonder where they got them white group, man. <laughs> they bought them on sale anyway. <laughs> I wonder how I get there then. If I put that flabbergasted them. And they stood in that tomb and the tomb was empty. They, they, the tomb was empty. And they looked around. Can you imagine how it really felt? Mm. I tell this every Easter, I'll tell it again. Because the blessed man, I want to bless you. Amen. Ralph Sexton, you're the gold moment. Went over there to the Holy Land. 
And they were there. There's a woman in the group. But I mean, they had a big group package, all of them with And they told us that uh, we're glad you come. We, we're glad you come and, and come and help us uh, look at where our Lord was. She said, well, to be honest with you, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. She said, I just come because I got a good deal on the ticket. Well, they said they made their way through the garden. And they went down to the tomb where Jesus was buried. Mm -hmm. And they got there singing the song of Zion. He got on, son. He got on. Mm -hmm. They said they left and got up, 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 up from the tomb and went up there. Said they began to take a head count and it was one short. And with that atheist woman, they said, one woman. They, they, they backtracked herself and got, by the time they got to the mouth of the tomb, they heard somebody say, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, he's alive, he's real. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 they got saved in the tomb when Jesus lay. Let me tell you, I get to see you today. I wasn't there when he was crucified. I wasn't there when he rose again. But I believe it is real. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It might not seem real to you. Yeah. It may not right. seem real to me. But I tell you what, it is real. He yeah. did come. He rose. He took. He came. And he would die. died. He was buried. Amen. And he was rose again. Let me yeah. tell you, friend. Aren't you glad we serve the living yeah. church? Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. But look at look at, I'm gonna show you something else. <clears throat> it just don't seem real because of the importance of the declaration. And they stood there. The other one even said, Why seek you to live among the dead? What would you do if uh, someone you knew that, that loved you loved it died? And you went to see it to view the corpse. I said, What do you seek him for? He's alive. They got alive. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? And they stood. Can you imagine? I tell you what, I bet he had chill bumps come all over him. <laughs> well, they said, hey, why do you seek you to live alone today? He's not here. Well, he's risen. Yes. You see, they saw him actually and die. They were there at the foot of the cross when Jesus gave, gave up the ghost. They see him be crucified, nailed him. Nail and hand, hand nailed with a uh, spike. They see him crowned with a crown of thorns. They see the lacerated body where he's been beaten and abused. And they even, even there, they personally helped him take him off the cross. They said that the spices that they bought to anoint Jesus' body was over 100 pounds of spices they put in his body. They knew he had died. They knew he was dead. Where else would you go look for a dead man? You wouldn't go look for him in Walmart. Yeah. But they went to, to the tomb. Since the earliest stage of the time, man had asked his question in Job 14, 14, if a man died, Shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Jesus, they had saw Jesus raise the people from the dead. But they had to die again. Right. You see, he rose Lazarus, the will of name's son, he raised. But I'll tell you what, they seen Jairus' daughter come back to life. But look here in verse 8 what it says. They told him, said, look. And they remembered his words. Ain't it funny that it's strange that they were there. They heard him preach on. They heard him when he was there at last and said, I am the resurrection and the life. Mm -hmm. But they finally remembered. You know, they said, you know what? <coughs> he said something about rising again. Amen. He did say something about coming back, raising from the grave again. Yeah. I'll tell you what, friend. I'll tell you what, friend. I guarantee you right now, folks, 
They got a dose of reality when they remember that they made it. They remember these words. You know what Jesus said? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus said to them, I'm the resurrection, the life. He that believes on me, though he was dead, yet he shall live. John 2 and 10, the thief cometh not but will steal, and to kill and destroy. I am coming that they may have life and they may have a more yeah. Amen. The message was clear. Death was not the end. Yes. They said that they both went over to the crowd and Pharisees. They knew they heard him preach on the resurrection. They said, Father, they told Pilate, said he, he said he's going to raise again. Said we want to watch. Mm -hmm. We got to watch him. Because what's going to happen to the disciples is going to come and steal his body away to make it seem like he rose. And that is what they teach even today the Jews. And they gave them money for a lie. And they said the, the guards' money for a lie when, when, they, when they, he had resurrected. Pilate said, You go ahead and guard that tomb. Make it sure as you can. They rolled that old stone over the tomb when they buried him. They put pitch and tar all around it and sealed that tomb. They said, There's no way. But I can see it now. Mm -hmm. On that third day, somewhere right before dawn, something's going to be shaking. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh yeah. my soul. Amen. It begin to shake. It begin to roll. It didn't fell like that, man. It Ooh. rolled. Yeah. Thank yeah. God. He didn't roll. It didn't roll away. Then it could come out. It roll away when you go in. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad he's alive? Amen. Aren't you glad he rose again? Right yeah. now, yeah. let me tell you. Yeah. The yeah. devil said, I got him. And God said, You ain't got him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let yeah. me tell you that. Aren't you glad this morning? Yeah. It, yeah. it, it, it may not seem real, but honey, yeah. it is real. Amen. 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 He's the only one that overpowered death. Yeah. Can you imagine the scene in hell? Mm. Them demons gathered all around <laughs> when he died. And old dad, he said, I got him. I got him. <laughs> Nobody's ever escaped my clutches. That's true. <laughs> First day, <laughs> the devil says to dad, you got him, he's still here. <laughs> but he's not here. Come on. Yeah. Second day, he said, you got him, he's still here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I like the third day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, oh, yeah. God, I'm about to run. Yeah. Yeah. But he said, hey, had you got him? He said, I don't understand this time. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I don't understand. Oh. Yeah. I don't understand it this morning. Yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. I lost my grip. <laughs> he, he, he pushed me in the corner. Hey, man, he took the key to the head. keys of death away. And he walked out and he told him, and he broke the whole crown of paradise out. Yes, Amen. Lord, I got it. Amen. Yes, Amen. <laughs> Somebody said that, he, he was, that tomb was just a place for him to spend the night. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He arose. He was the only one that could overpower the power of the grave. He was the only one that broke the grip of death, loosened the grip of death. He was the only one that could nullify the curse of the law of the fall. And he kept on my dead. And he hung there. And he hung on the cross that day. The very last word he said, tell me yes, time. And that is, as, as, that, is, that is translated into our English language. The transaction has been completed. It's finished. Yes. Mm -hmm. Paid in full. The devil could not stand that. Mm -hmm. And ever since he died, ever since Jesus arose, through the, through the centuries and centuries, there have been liberals and lost men and women trying to defute the resurrection. But he's alive. And I'm glad he's alive this morning, my friends. Amen. But I'll tell you something, friend. The power of the message of the message was greatest of them all. It don't seem to be real. 
It don't seem weird that God saved old sinner like me to forgive him. Yeah. 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 And what Micah said, let me tell what Brother Michael said here. And Micah said, mm -hmm. he, he said, he will turn again and will have compassion upon us. He will do their enemies and now will cast their sin into the depths of the sea. Yes. That old black preacher said he cast them into the depths of the sea and put them aside. No fish. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Bible said in 1 Corinthians 6 11, and such as some of you, you when you are washed, you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. And every bit of our sins is washed away by the blood of Jesus. My guilt and shame had been replaced with cleansing and power. My guilt and shame. The Bible said the peace of God that passes all understanding should keep your mind through Christ Jesus. My condemnation is replaced with reconciliation. Yes. I was like the man on death row. I was sitting there ready to be condemned and die. Yeah. I was like they used to do in the old days, that old dead man. That man, that man would be on be, be destined to go to the execution chamber. That warden would walk in front of him as he walked behind to go to the death, the death chamber. He'd make you, he'd be crying. Dead man walking. Mm -hmm. I was a dead man walking. Yes. But before they flipped the switch and condemned me to hell, I'm glad my heavenly father mm -hmm. sent the word. Yes. He's forgiven. Amen. 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 Praise God. I want to tell you what, friend, today. I'm glad my guilt and shame is replaced with the peace of God. My condemnation will be replaced with reconciliation. And my bondage will be replaced with freedom. John 8, 36, if, there, if, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I'm glad he breaks and he gives me in broken hearts. Aren't you glad of that? Aren't you, you remember the day you got saved? Yeah, you remember how broke you got? You remember a time in your life since you've been saved there's been things that really broke your heart? But he helped you. And some of you can relate to you had a loved one that's gone on. That was the worst, that's the worst hurt you ever had. But God broke you up and God mended it. And I tell you what, I'm glad he mended a broken heart. Yep. He loves us with eternal and everlasting love. I can I can I can I, I can see him now. As he was walking up that street, that kind of cobblestone street. And the crowd, and he looked at him as though saying this, I'm doing this for you. Amen. I'm doing it for you. Amen. It's just, amen, I tell you what, it's hard to believe, amen. amen. It don't seem real how God would love us enough, amen, to break us out of our prison and set us free. Uh -huh. I'm glad it does not seem real because of the resurrection. We got abundant life. The devil has destroyed so many people's lives. He destroyed people's lives with drugs and alcohol and all kinds of stuff. But one day he's going to have his day in court. Does not the Bible say it? That one day every knee is going to bow. Yes. And every tongue is going to confess. And I just can't help believe this. That God's going to let us see him bow before God and say, you're our Savior. Yes, yes. For Jesus, and he's a Savior. And he may let us see him cast him into hell. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But because he lives, I stood in the courtroom. The judge turned my way. Looks like Yeah. 
burned when mercy walked yeah. in. Now, this second verse, I forget to remember this time. I stood there and wondered how could this be? Mm. Yeah. Oh, my, someone yeah. so guilty had just been set free. Oh, that's right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. My chains, they were broken. Yes. I was born again. The moment that mercy walked oh, in.